What's up everyone, it's Scott David Money Investing. In this video, we are gonna be talking about the idea and the concept of rate cuts. And there was a couple reports uh, from JP Morgan, from other couple experts, and even Fed's Bostic, Raphael Bostic, talking about rate cuts. And I wanna really put it in perspective and what that actually might mean for the markets because right now the markets are indeed pricing in about seven to eight, as much as nine rate cuts over the next 12 to 14 months. So it's one thing about pricing and rate cuts, it's completely different on how the markets might react to the rate cuts. So that my goal is to kind of focus on the latter, which is markets reaction to potential rate cuts and whether rate cuts will actually happen or not. We'll discuss that as well and I'll kind of walk you through some different scenarios. So as always, if you enjoy this video, find it helpful, make sure that you drop a like, don't forget to subscribe to the channel. If you're just joining us for the first time, don't forget the link to our Discord and Patreon is gonna be down below. There is a 16% discount with only three spots left. If you wanna be access, get access to all the Binance alerts, options alerts, trade ideas, all the private live streams, and of course be a part of our money investing community. Link's gonna be down below if you want to join and of course be a part of our community here. So this right here was the actual report. JP Morgan Asset says markets are right to be fed, uh, to bet that the Federal Reserve is going to cut rates very soon. In other words, uh, to bet that the Fed cuts are coming. So market is right to be penciling in cuts, says Mac Gorin, head of global rates in London. Inflation is too high and it will take a recession to bring it back down, uh, bring back down inflation. And uh, we will, um, and basically says that adding the US banking woes have only made a recession more likely. So one thing that I wanna mention is that rate cuts don't always mean bullish. Okay, I think there's this very negative, not really negative, but a mis, uh, misconception here that rate cuts all of a sudden means bullish and rate hikes means bearish. I think that's something that we have to really take a step back and understand that that's not always the case. And I'll kind of walk you through the different scenarios and why I'm saying that in later in the video. But basically what they're saying is that a US recession is virtual certainty and the Federal Reserve may lower interest rates by a third uh, by the third quarter as growth loses momentum and the market is right to be penciling in cuts. Uh, inflation is too high and it will take a recession to bring it back down. And uh, the US banking woes have only made a recession more likely is what they mentioned uh, at the moment. Now, there's another report which mentioned the Federal Reserve is unlikely to cut rates in July. So other experts pretty much mentioned the Fed won't cut rates anytime soon for two key reasons. Inflation remains sticky and the economy has stayed strong. So there you go. On one hand, you've got uh, an analyst expecting inflation to be high or it's still high and recession almost a guaranteed, right? Certainty and, and pretty much very much likely. And this report is saying that inflation is high, which is the same, same assumption, but saying the economy is very strong, right? And that's why they're not going to cut rates. So again, you've got two very, very polarizing reports here. And Fed Bostic also mentioned uh, that, however, they don't see cuts coming anytime soon, even if the economy goes into a recession. So he's got a completely different view of the actual economy of the markets. He's saying that the rate cuts are not coming, even though, uh, even though there's probability or even though we see a recession in the economy, what we are so seeing or focusing on is that inflation is persistently high and consumers have been really resilient in terms of their spending and labor markets remain extremely tight. All of those things suggest that there's still going to be upward pressure on prices um, at the moment. But the fact that they you know, mentioned that rate cuts are not coming anytime soon, even if the economy goes into recession, is quite interesting uh, to begin with. Now, Kara Murphy, Chief Investment Officer at Kestra Investment says, and I quote, the Fed rarely cuts rates without some sort of crisis in between. And that's the point that I wanna drill down on because I've kind of created a very nice, uh, you know, quick chart for us to look at. But before we get there, uh, this is what the market's pricing in at the moment. Uh, you know, 74% probability that we're going to see a pause in, uh, in June and then another pause in July, meaning that we're going to stay there at these levels in July and then rate cuts priced in starting September of this year, meaning September 2023, we're going to see that first cut all the way down to as low as 3% by November of next year. Literally November 6th, can't believe there's a there's a meeting scheduled for November 6th next year, day before uh, my birthday when I will turn 28. So that's where the markets are right now uh, in terms of pricing in for rate cuts. Now this is what I wanna go over, right? And this is the misconception uh, in the markets among investors that rate cuts equals quantitative easing, which equals bullish, right? That's, that's bullish, that's a cue to actually buy uh, in the market but history has shown us and i've shown you many charts in the past that rate cuts when the fed when the fed actually starts cutting rates 
many times the markets have actually sold off from those levels even more, right? When the Federal Reserve has actually started cutting rates, uh, the markets have sold out even further. And the, and the main reason for that is because of what Kara mentioned, right? The Federal Reserve doesn't cut rates just for the sake of it. They're not cutting rates because they ha they're having fun. They're like, okay, one morning they wake up, let's just go ahead and cut rates. No, it doesn't work like that. They cut rates because there is a crisis in play. There is a problem, uh, a really significant problem in the economy that they need to fix. So what might look like a rate cut, which is monetary policy easing and quantitative easing, you know, might seem like a bullish move on, on the surface, might actually be a way to combat or resolve something that's already going on in the economy. Now, rate cut, as we know, obviously creates quantitative easing and quantitative easing happens to stimulate growth or spur investing and borrowing and spending. And why does the Fed actually do quantitative easing to begin with, right? Why would they want to stimulate growth? Why would they want to actually spur spending, borrowing or investing? So there's only a few reasons, right? Three reasons precisely that they would be cutting rates. Number one, to fix a recession, right? We don't have that yet. Rate, rate cut to fix deflation. If prices actually end up being negative, right? Then they want to spur growth. They want people to spend. They want to encourage people to spend their money so that inflation can be back above 0%, right? In, an, in a deflationary environment, it would be a no-brainer for the Federal Reserve to be cutting rates because they want people to spend. They want people to borrow cheap money so that they can invest, they can spend, and prices go back above 0%. Actually, they're increasing because the thing with inflation you have to understand is that it's a very fine line of balance. You can't tilt in either direction too far or too extreme in one direction. You can't have hyperinflation and you can't have significant deflation. You have to be in the middle. And that's why the target's at 2%, it's not 0%, it's not negative 1%, it's not 5%. Target's at 2% for a reason. And on average, you'll notice in the past like 40 years or something before uh, the episode of 2021, 2022, we have seen inflation somewhere between zero and 2%. Very rarely dips below 0%, but the point is that the Federal Reserve would only be cutting rates in order to fight one, a recession, two, fight deflation, or three, to fight a crisis, right? Which is basically gonna cause a recession in the future. A crisis is just like something that's happening before a recession takes place. So that's what Kara mentioned, right? They're cutting rates in order to fight a crisis. So this, from an economic landscape, doesn't actually sound bullish to me, right? I mean, it probably won't be bullish um, for, for the economy because that's why what we have seen in history, again, every time the Federal Reserve cuts rates, the market sells off even more. That's an anticipation of what is likely to come, which is recession, deflation, or crisis. Now, if we actually see no recession in the economy in the U.S. in 2023 and inflation's high, I, don't th I think we can kind of disregard a cut. I don't think the Federal Reserve is going to cut in that environment if there is no recession, because like I said, a rate cut equals recession. They're only cutting rates to fight recession. If there's no recession, there's no need for uh, a rate cut and not to mention inflation if it stays high. In my opinion, there's not gonna be a cut. Now, if there is no recession, but inflation at 2%, even then, right? What's the motive for the Federal Reserve to cut rates? If the economy can continue to handle what we're seeing with 2% or actually close to 3% unemployment rate, right? Significant jobs being added every single month, labor markets tight, spending's strong, economic growth is decent, earnings were decent, um, and inflation is on its path to coming down of 2%, why would the Federal Reserve, what's the motive, right? That's what we're trying to understand from the Federal Reserve standpoint. What is going to be that motivation for the Federal Reserve to start cutting rates? They're not fighting a recession right now. Inflation is not at 2%. It's still pretty elevated, right? Even though it's on its way down, that still doesn't give the Fed the freedom or the motive or the incentive to actually start cutting rates. Um, and, and of course, they're not fighting a crisis, even though we might feel like there is a crisis, the banking crisis, yes, there is, uh, but that's not translating over to the other parts of the economy. It's kind of contained in the banking sector. Um, so again, the question that we need to ask ourselves is what is gonna be that motive for the Federal Reserve to actually be cutting rates? And if they are, the only way this actually plays out, the first thing that I mentioned, rate cuts equals QE equals bullish, the only way this actually plays out is that they do it just for the sake of it. There's no recession. Inflation's back down and they decide to spur growth regardless of what's going on. In other words, even though inflation's back down and there's no recession, they decide to, they wanna cut rates despite the fact, 
right? They still want to provide that quantitative easing. They still want to stimulate growth and want to spur more spending, investing and borrowing. That's when this scenario becomes very, very bullish. Okay. I hope you follow that logic. I hope it's like clear, uh, you know, where I'm trying to get at, right? So let me know in the comments section below. What do you think about this? Um, but hopefully this was clear enough. Um, and what we're trying to drill down is uh, what is going to be the main motive for the Federal Reserve to be cutting rates. And rate cuts are not always bullish. More likely, they're trying to fight something, which is a recession or deflation or crisis. Uh, and right now, we have none of those. We have nothing. We don't have a recession. We don't have deflation. We somewhat have a crisis. But uh, but that obviously we know that it's not going to be enough for a rate cut. Um, the only only way I see rate cuts being actually bullish is that uh, the Federal Reserve cuts rates uh, despite uh, the fact that you know they, would, they in other words they just want to do it for the sake of it, right? Because inflation's coming down uh, and there's no recession, they just go ahead and do it anyway. Uh, but there's no gonna there's no real motive to actually do it. Uh, so let me know your thoughts down in the comment section below. What do you think about? you know, the market's pricing in. And again, I'm not saying that this is not going to happen. It's it's probably, it's, it's very much a possibility because, uh, you know, we know that the Federal Reserve themselves or nobody really knows what's going to happen. So if in two months or a few months, you know, we see the markets and the economy landscape kind of change, then obviously there's going to be new information. There's going to be new data. There's going to be new things to look at, which are obviously going to change everything that we have talked about. So um, because, a couple of years ago, inflation was, quote, transitory, which it never was. And the Federal Reserve ended up raising rates, even though months before they told us they're not raising rates. So anything is possible, obviously, in the markets. But I'm just trying to help you understand, help myself understand as well, what is going to be that main motive behind those rate cuts that the Federal Reserve is going to do, which are being priced in in the next couple of months, starting September, markets pricing and rate cuts. What is, what is, it, what is it that's going to actually motivate the Fed to start cutting rates in September? Is inflation going to be back down to 2% or probably are we going to see deflation? Um, or um, is the economy going to be in a severe recession? Is the Fed going to start fighting that? So that's the, real, that's the question that I want to ask. Anyway, hope you guys enjoyed this video. If you found it helpful, if you did, make sure that you drop a like. Don't forget to subscribe to the channel. Again, three spots left. If you want to join and be a part of our money investing community, 16% annual discount available. Link's going to be down below. So always happy investing. I'll see you all in the next video.